What is the difference in special properties of the Noodler's lines? Australian roses, bad, Bay State, eel, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so um, first thing I wanna point you to is we have a Noodler's ink property spreadsheet, which I think is gonna help you a lot for understanding the special properties and what they mean, the various definitions. Um, so I have you know, the terms, and these terms are all Noodler's specific terms. So I'll explain those to you right now. Um, first one is bulletproof. Um, which is you know the most catchy and kind of interesting and it's so commonplace in my own v vernacular right now that I'm like oh yeah bulletproof whatever but I remember when I was first getting into fountain pens I was like bulletproof does that mean you can like shoot the glass and it won't break or something it's like what does that even mean um, it just means like it, it's very um, you know strong I guess so it's UV resistant bleach resistant it's meant to be really kind of tamper resistant right um, that's the whole point of it is that you put it down and it will not go away so that's um, a very noodler specific term there nobody else calls their stuff bulletproof um, the next term is eternal and the terms between bulletproof and, bulletproof and eternal it's like well what's the difference well eternal is really just more archival fade resistance so it's not so much forgery proof but it's more that it's going to hold up and kind of naturally over time and not fade uh, as much so you can have a lot of inks that are bulletproof and eternal but you can have some that are eternal but not bulletproof does that make sense um, the next one you have is forgery resistant, which does kind of fall a lot into bulletproof and overlaps a bit, but there's a couple that are forgery resistant without being bulletproof. I understand that's confusing. Um, that's probably the most confusing between the two, but um, it's impervious to alcohol, solvents, and all that. But I think what's the, the distinguishing characteristic between the forgery resistant ones is um, Nathan Tardif, the guy who makes the ink, he actually formulates them and mixes slightly different um, amounts of some of the dye components. The way he explains it is it's kind of like a combination lock. So if you ever needed to trace back a specific ink to the bottle that was used, or at least the batch that was used, um, you would be able to do that if you were using one of those forgery resistant inks. Um, the next one is water resistant. So this is just partially or fully waterproof, not necessarily forgery resistant, like you might be able to bleach wash it, but in just kind of in normal writing, it's not gonna wash away quite as easily um, with water. Uh, next one is fluorescent. So this actually glows under UV black light. So it has some sort of UV reflective component to it. Then you have lubricated, which is when you add additional lubricants, um, and really it's made for piston filling mechanisms, so that um, you don't have to you know, lubricate them as much. It kind of keeps the piston lubricated as you're using the pen. And then the last one is freeze resistant. So these are uh, inks that are made to go below. You know, ink is mostly made of water. So if you get you know, well below freezing, the ink can actually freeze inside the pen, but these are made to resist that and still write and flow well, even at very far below freezing temperatures, like negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit and maybe even below. So um, that kind of explains some of the terminology. And now I'll get into some of the series names, which some of the series names are not super obvious or we don't like. What's challenging about this is we can't really, we have a good, a good faceted search feature on our site, but we can't really put you know, some of these Noodler specific terms in there because then only Noodler's inks would show up and it would be kind of confusing for other brands and stuff like that because the other brands may still have some of the same properties but not be called those so they wouldn't fall under. So it's it's a little confusing there in terms of how we structured on the site, I admit. Um, and then there's some that it's like, it falls under a certain series of ink from Noodler's but it's not obvious that it is that way. So that's what this video is to help you with at least a little bit here. Um, so the first one I'm going to start out with is the Warden series, or the Bad series. So this is Bad Blue Heron, um, Bad Black Moccasin, Bad Green Gator, and Bad Belted Kingfisher. So these are, you know, the forgery resistant ones. Um, they are laser proof. So <laughs> the story behind these inks is that back in the early 2000s, Nathan w had Noodler's Black and he said, this thing is impervious and if anybody can remove this ink from paper, uh, yeah, I will give you $1,000. I think it was $1,000 or something like that and said, I'll give you $1,000 and I'll then develop something that you can't remove. So some grad student from MIT used some kind of specific laser and removed the ink from the paper using this laser. So Nathan specifically formulated ink that could not be removed by laser. And that is where the bad series of inks came from. Voila. 
Next series we have is Bay State. So these are very vibrant, they're more alkaline. Um, and they're not compatible with other inks. If you mix them, they will turn into a gel and kind of foam up and it will not play nicely. So you do not want to mix these with anything. You can mix them with themselves, the base dates, but not the other ones. So that includes Bay State Blue, Cape Cod Cranberry, and Concord Grape. So very vibrant, but don't mix them with others. Next one is the kind of the UK, the Russian, or like other countries series. So Nathan has developed a lot of inks specific to certain regions or countries or things like that. It's not just the Russian UKs, there's been a lot of different countries he's developed them for, um, for various reasons. And he usually heavily themes them around whatever's going on in that area, often politically natured, um, but sometimes, you know, you know, dealing with arts or uh, music or something like that. But um, you know, so there's a lot that I'm going to kind of not mention as much. He's on Canadian, he's on, you, you know, all these other things. Um, but the ones that, that we actually have on our site is some Russian and UK inks. So inks like Empire Red, El Lawrence, Matahari's Cordial, Dostoevsky. Uh, we've had Rachmaninoff. We don't have any more, but we used to have it. And so, um, you know, things like that that are, that were that are either are made for a specific country and that's it and they never are made again, or they have been made for a specific country. These ones I listed here used to be made for either UK or Russia, got discontinued a long time ago. Nathan wanted to bring them back, so we brought them back just to kind of in the, excuse me, in the US in a limited capacity. So for these inks, the properties can vary all over the place, but for the Russian UK ones, most of them are eternal and UV, UV um, um, fluorescent in some capacity, um, and then there's usually that heavy, heavy theming component as well. Next one we have is Eternal series, so it's a little confusing because there's Eternal in terms of the actual component itself, um, which is is more of a property. Um, but there is actually an Eternal series, which is the way to easily distinguish it is it's the ones that come in the Noodler's one ounce bottles. So most everything comes in a three ounce or maybe a four and a half, but the one ounce bottles, which include Hunter Green, Fox Red. Periwinkle, Luxury Blue, Whiteness of the Whale. I think that's all of them. Um, I might be missing one, but um, they they are all the eternal ones. So they're going to have the archival, you know, fade resistant properties, um, and more than likely be generally waterproof as well um, on those. So that's what's up with those. And the reason they're in one ounce bottles is because the chemicals needed for them are very expensive. So Nathan put them in smaller bottles so that you wouldn't have a thirty dollar three ounce bottle. Charge, he was able to charge less. Next, we have a highlighter series. I don't know if that's officially a series name, but it's a highlighter inks. That's kind of their own category. Um, the Dragon Cat series would be one that's considered, but I don't even know that they're still there. They might be on the outs anyway. Um, but there's a Dragon Cat, pink, green, and orange that have been around for years. Um, Hellfire, Georgia Peach, Summer Tanager, St. Patty's Ire, Firefly, which is like I think the best of all of them. A um, lot of different highlighter inks there. Um, that, that really don't fall into their own series, but that's the main component of those, of those there. The next one is the American Eel series. It's called the Eel, American Eel. I'm not sure exactly which is the proper term, but it's called American Eel on some of them. Um, they are the ones that are lubricated. So the lubricated is the Eel series. If you think like eels are slippery, whatever, lubricated, that kind of makes sense, right? So um, most of these are lubricated versions of uh, existing colors. For example, there's Noodler's Black and then there's Black Eel. There's Noodler's Blue and Blue Eel. Um, you know, so there's there's several different ones where it's there there are similar properties, just lubricated. Um, there's a couple, you know, Green Cactus and Green Cactus Eel. There's a couple that aren't um, fall in that group, like Cactus Fruit Eel. There's no just regular cactus fruit. Um, and then uh, Noodler's Purple Heart, which is one of our exclusives, is actually a, a purple lubricated ink, but it's not called eel because Purple Heart Eel just sounded really strange, so we chose to just call it Purple Heart. Um, but that falls into that group too. So again, those are the ones that you can use in piston filling pens. You can use it in any pen. They write wetter, so if you want your pen to write wetter, you use an eel ink, um, and that can be really good there. Um, the next one is the Polar series, so that is freeze resistant, um, and also I believe most if not all of them are lubricated and bulletproof as well, um, but the freeze resistant component is what makes them polar. So polar blue, black, brown, green, those are all part of the Polar series, uh, and they really work too. They'll feather a little bit more uh, on most papers than others, but um, they will resist uh, freezing for sure. All right, this next one is called the V-Mail series. 
So this is one that's like not nearly as obvious, but they fall into their own series. Um, so they are World War II themes, and they were reverse engineered to match inks that came from that era. So Nathan did some kind of chemical wizardry and actually formulated stuff that was you know, nearly identical matches to inks that he was able to acquire from that time. Um, so this, and most of these inks have like some sort of like B2 bombers or something like that on the, on the bottle that, uh, that look, um, not a B2, maybe not a B2 bomber, I don't know. I don't know my plain terminology that well, but you know, planes uh, on it from that from that era. Um, so this would include Air Corps Blue Black, Burma Road Brown, GI Green, North African Violet, Midway Blue, Operation Overload Orange. So all of those are part of that V-Mail series. Uh, next one is the, I guess I'll call it the Fast Dry series. It was previously known as the Bernanke inks, um, which it still kind of is, but you had Bernanke blue and black. Those are fast drying inks, so they are meant to dry quickly on the page. doesn't mean they'll dry fast in your pen. It means they'll dry fast when they get on the paper, and they do that by absorbing into the paper and kind of spreading out. So they're, they write a little wetter. Or they, they seem to write wetter. It's weird because they're fast drying inks, but they actually write really wet um, because of how they absorb into the page. It's so that it's really made for lefties, so that if you're smearing your hand across the page quickly after you've written, you're not going to get ink all over your hand. Okay? And then um, Q-Turnity would be like the blue-black color that fits in there. It's, it's not called a Bernanke ink, but it's within that same series, same properties. Um, and then the last one that I kind of have is like the blue erase, black erase. It doesn't really have a name for the series. It's only two inks, but they're whiteboard inks. So they're wet writing whiteboard inks. You put them into like a highlighter tip, uh, you know, preppy or something like that. Um, and you can use it on a dry erase board. So it works pretty well. And then um, there's all kinds of other ones that don't fall into a specific category, but they are very unique properties like Kung to Cheng, Whaleman Sepia, Blue Ghost. Uh, Rome Burning, the Australian Roses ones. Um, the Australian Roses, those are kind of more designed to be used for flex pens. They kind of fall in the, you know, there's not like really a flex pen series, um, but the Black Swan and the English Roses um, ones, sorry, Black Swan Australian Roses, Black Swan and English Roses, and then um, Blue Nose Bear actually was kind of developed to be similar to that as well, um, is meant to be really dramatic and shade really nicely and have a lot of color variation when used in a flex pen. That's kind of what it's there for. Um, and then Dark Matter is just an example of an ink that's kind of neat, you know, it's like an, it's another one, kind of like the V-Mail ones where it was developed to mimic ink that was used for the Manhattan Project. So, um, you know, just unique components like that. And there's all kinds of heavy theming around a lot of the different Noodler's inks. And there's ones with varying properties kind of all over the place. That's where that spreadsheet really helps a ton as you can see all the different properties um, that are used on those. But I think that pretty much hits on all the major series that you have there. Um, hopefully that clears it up a little bit, but I know that's a lot of information there, and believe me, it's taken a long time to make any sense of how all that has unfolded in the last, you know, 15 years or so since Nathan's been making ink. Um, and the last thing I just kind of want to leave off with that is if you're looking at that properties chart, you're going to notice that um, there's there's some where it's like, okay, different, different inks will be in a series, and it'll have some components, but it, maybe not others, and certain things like that. And then there's some that say partially. The ones that are partially, what it means is that there's multiple dye components that are mixed in there, and one of them, I'll use Black Swan Australian Roses as an example, um, is the maroon component to the ink is not bulletproof and it'll wash away with water, and the black component is, so the black will stay behind. So the ink, he calls it partially because one component of the ink will stay, but the ink in its natural original color won't. You know, um, uh, our color Liberty's Elysium is the same way. You know, the more vibrant component of the blue will wash away, but the darker, uh, more permanent component of the blue will stay there. So it kind of washes away a little bit, but it kind of also stays there for basically forever. So um, you get into some things like that. So we put it as partially.